Hi everybody, uh, I'm in Edinburgh. Just in case you're wondering what's going on, um, uh, I went to Summer City at the weekend, I'm now in Edinburgh, didn't really have a lot of time to record a video at home, therefore I'm recording it now. And today I want to talk about toilets, which I think is actually quite an appropriate thing. I'm here at the Edinburgh Fringe, where there's loads and loads and loads of LGBT content, especially drag queens and uh, genderqueer shows, that kind of thing, because it's, it's that kind of place, all right? It's a bit political. So you would think that this would be the prime place for gender neutral toilets, an acceptance of people's gender identities and the toilets that they want to need to use. Well, I'm on a mission uh, over the next couple of days to find some gender neutral toilets in Edinburgh. I haven't seen any yet. I've been here for about five, five hours or so. So uh, I'm on a mission. But I was having a conversation with some of my friends at Sitsi about gender neutral toilets. And there, were, there was one or two people who um, thought that this problem with uh, men just saying that they're a woman and going into women's toilets and potentially assaulting women in those toilets meant that they didn't feel safe in uh, their gender segregated female toilets. And you know, I kind of get, get and understand this, but this is why gender neutral toilets are so important. Now, when I was uh, an elected officer in my student's union, uh, not me, but the community officer, who's also called Andy, instigated gender neutral toilets in the student's union. Basically, uh, we had some work done on the ground floor and the men's toilets were knocked down, replaced with uh, some stairs, basically, and a lift shaft, which was all lovely. And then we had the uh, women's toilets, uh, which were little used really because of the location of them um, but we didn't have any gender neutral toilets in the building so uh, what Andy did was um, apply to the university because it's their building uh, <laughs> to make them gender neutral toilets and there was all these plans which came in and it was really weird uh, and we're like oh no all you need to do is change the signs because being women's toilets they were all cubicles anyway you just need to change the signs to toilets <laughs> and we did this with with little fanfare we didn't make any statements about it or anything like that uh, there was something that went to student council uh, in reports basically about it and we didn't have any complaints other than from security staff because they didn't understand how it was going to be policed we didn't have any problems with, from the students at all and I know uh, that the student union down the road at the University of Manchester also had uh, on their ground floor gender neutral toilets and I don't think they had any problems from the students there was a, a lot of hoof-ha about it in their uh, union council but um, <laughs> there wasn't any problems as far as I know but the argument kind of goes that uh, if men can just assign themselves as a female and go into women's toilets then they can assault people well there's a couple of things here Security guards don't stand outside of toilets usually. Certainly not outside of licensed premises. So any idea that security are gonna stop men going into women's toilets is hilarious. It's a convention that men don't go into women's toilets, you know. So if a man was intent in going into women's toilets and assaulting women, then it wouldn't matter if they can identify as women or not. That's not the reason why they might, you know, that's not an excuse and it certainly isn't a reason. The legal thing here would be the assault. If we had a lot more gender neutral toilets, then not only would you get, uh, not only would it be a safe space for um, trans people who present maybe as the opposite gender that they feel, but it's also good for everybody because rather than having that one man who misidentifies themselves in order to go to the female toilets, although I'd never known that to be a problem, you have lots of men coming in at any time and most of them are good people. So that if you did have an assault in there, probably somebody would come in and stop it. So if I find any toilets, uh, I would have, I would have cut them into the footage that are coming in here. But if I didn't, then there won't be any. But that is a surprise, especially for the Edinburgh Fringe.
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then do give a thumbs up. You can do that just down below. I make videos every single week, and next week it might even be back in my room rather than outside in the park. So do remember to subscribe, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.